uh, uh, so the talk today uh, is uh, going to be a reflection of which I have been working with the family members in the university at some of the trades, so I go to the university, <laughs> and apparently the ones they removed now. <laughs> and uh, all the studies of the particular system, the quality is only the natural and the in that I'm going to refer to as a LLD for the obvious reasons. Okay, so the first the first thing I think about uh, trying to establish a connection between the so-called localized induction approximation, also referred to as for the pyramid of or the random method, <laughs> and uh, it's a type of the uh, LLD equations. So um, the process function of the phenomena flow is a proportion model to, to model the, the motion of a vortex in this uh, fluid. And uh, the relation with LMD equations is that when you take a solution of the vortex filament and you take the derivative of that of the solution, then that solves the solution of, of the random lipsit equation. And in the context of both the filaments, we took a long time ago with the with the Vega and Rivas, and then later on with the Vega, the systems of solutions of the normal flow that develop uh, singularities in, in the infinite child, and in particular we took the systems of solutions of uh, that uh, uh, generate corners in finite time, and also some sort of the uh, 3D logarithm uh, spirals. And uh, motivated by the results in the context of a normal flow and the and the and the connection with the permagnet, what we wanted to what well, this type of the corner singularity is related to this type of solution at the level of the lambda lipsit equation. And uh, the equation we are going to consider today is a dispersion a version, so the diffusion version of this movement of the lambda lipsit Gilbert equation that as a parameter, um, alpha here that uh, uh, introduced the fusion into the, into the system. So the motivation to study this uh, this model, the Landau LRT equation, uh, coming from the vortex kilometer equation is that we, did, we, we wanted to see whether the techniques we learn to understand in these and similar solutions in the, in the, at the level of the context of LIA could be uh, uh, used to also understand particular solutions of other physically relevant uh, uh, models. And uh, in particular, at the level of the, of the lambda ellipse equation, a natural, a natural um, physical model that is relevant is the LLD equation that models the, the motion of the magnets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start by looking at the, as you said, that there are the techniques that we are going to the word develop here that were also used uh, to, to study other other models like more movement of more patches and also um, we also consider models of the shoulder maps, but instead of the put the sphere into the character of okay. So let's start with introducing the LNG equation. The LRD equation uh, is, a, is a couple system of equations, non-linear. Uh, the non uh, fun, the non is a, is a vector value function that takes um, values on the unit sphere and is the representation uh, vector or spin vector. And uh, the LRD equation uh, provides the evolution, the time evolution of the unknown in terms of two values. <laughs> The first term is the so called exchange interaction. And the second term is a dissipative term. The cross product there is the, the, is the cross product of that similar tree. And there are two constants here for the exchange constant and the damping of Hilbert constant. Uh, amounts for uh, the sort of the light, see the interaction between. Uh, the exchange of energy and the presence of dissipation in the system. So it's easy to see that that's why uh, considering a reparameterization in time, that we can uh, assume with a loss of generality that the constant theta and alpha lies in zero one, 
you know that the constant beta say is related to the constant alpha uh, using this relation here. So basically, we have a family of equations that depends on the parameter alpha that moves between zero and one. And uh, this model was proposed as uh, a uh, model of the elements of the thin vector in from magnetic uh, materials by Landau and As I said before, there are um, uh, the family of these energy equations, they include some well known geometric equations, and in particular, at the level when we consider no dissipation of damping in the system, when alpha is zero, we have the map into the sphere, again, from, from R into the sphere. So, this type of equation, they have natural general analysis to higher energy. At the level of, uh, of, uh, of no presence of the, of, uh, when the presence of the diffusion is, is the, the most, so when alpha is one, we recover the feed flow for hard moving in the sphere. Okay, so, it's not clear the relation from here to here. This is just the fact that uh, we have uh, a non function lives on the sphere and some uh, standard uh, energy. The vector product and scalar. Yeah. And in the general case, when alpha is between uh, zero and one, uh, energy interpolates between these, these two models and it's a hybrid and it's a, it, it has a it has a dissipation. Yeah. A couple of uh, a few things that uh, they are straightforward to see properties from solutions of these equations are the following. The first property is that the, the norm of the of the unknown. Um, a nice environment at this point in time. So, if we start with an initial data that lives in the sphere, then uh, the solution remains in the sphere. There is a scale imbalance of that equation, meaning that if we have a solution, this reparameterization of the solution gives the solution. The fact that the, the cross product is invariant and the rotation gives me also a rotation invariant. So, given any rotation in our field, if I rotate the solution, okay, solution. And uh, although we are not going to use this, uh, the, this uh, the following property in this uh, in this talk, uh, one important um, relation is that uh, the energy equation in dimension one uh, is related to certain cubic precipitative Schrodinger equations. Here, the so called non experimental and stereoplastic projects. That has been relevant in the study, the study, in the study, the stability, say, of the, the poor singularity at the level of the panorama. Um, when alpha is uh, zero, the zone in the map uh, is unreversible, and uh, when we have a little bit of the vision, obviously, it's not, uh, the vision is not time uh, reversible, and it's not parabolic type. Okay. What is the form of the dissipation in the Schrodinger equation? What is the form of the dissipation in the Schrodinger equation in this uh, correspondence? This is the Schrodinger map. I'm going here. Yeah. Uh, it's a cubic. When alpha is zero, you have a u cube. You know, what's the form of the dissipation that appears? What do you mean by that? Yeah. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, we can discuss later, yeah. Um, right, so now another question that is being relevant in, in, in studying the global solution of many nonlinear uh, models and also in the, in the context of formation of singularities is whether or not there are um, solutions uh, of these of certain models that are in, uh, Invariant on the spreading of the equation. Okay. So this in this context, uh, whether uh, the question is whether or not there are uh, solutions that remain invariant under this scaling. And because we have uh, the not time reversibility in general, we can discuss two types of such similar solutions. These are expanded solutions, so they are given by a certain profile evaluated at points of this form or a shrinker solutions, that is uh, the certain profile evaluated at points of this form when t is negative in this case. 
when alpha is zero, we find this equals to three Okay. Okay, why do we care about these things? Uh, Spanders uh, evolved uh, from the rule at the value of time equals to zero, and usually are related to non unitless phenomena, the solution of singularities, and long time description of solutions. As Schwinkers uh, evolved towards the singularity uh, time at t equals zero, and uh, are often related to non enough singularity formation. And maybe more um, also very important from the point of view of developing theory, Boyle Fosner's theory associated to, to, to um, this type of, uh, of model is that uh, understanding the dynamics and properties of and similar solutions or particular solutions of certain models uh, provides us with an idea of what are the natural spaces that we need to develop Boyle um, Fosner's theory. That captures this uh, typically uh, relevant structure. Okay, so that's uh, that was our motivation. So the aim of this talk is to understand uh, the to prove existence and, and study the analytical uh, behavior of this cell seminar for the one the other the how this how these solutions behave with respect to the damping parameter. Um, uh, in the two one dimensional case, that's the framework we are here, here. In the case of the Schrodinger map, the cell similar solution to the Schrodinger map at the level of the ferromagnets were considered by these two authors, and at the level of uh, the development of uh, the work of Vega, Malikan, Rivas, and Sal. But in general, uh, very little is known about uh, analytically about the uh, uh, of the uh, individual uh, has on the evolution of the speed. So we want to understand that. Um, at higher dimensional level, when we uh, talk about cell similar solutions, and most of the works related to cell similar solutions are at the level of either the Schrodinger map, not too many, and mostly on the level of the uh, harmonic maps where they have assumed some sort of extra extra hands up, say equivariant cell similar hands up for alternative uh, symmetries. And um, when we are in LLG equations, so strictly with even one properly LLG equation, the existence of cell similar solutions um, um, was a consequence of a result that we prove uh, me and Andre related to a to a world of uh, result. Of this type of equations in higher dimensions. But as I said, we are going to present our talk to the one dimensional. Before doing that, I would like to, to discuss what I call a rigidity results for cell similar solutions of this model. And the result, the rigidity result is the following assuming that if we have a regular solution of our equation that is either of the printer or the standard type. For some profile M that lives on the sphere, then uh, it's straightforward to see that the profile is the solution of this, of this couple uh, equation, which uh, can be recast again by using the part that we live on the sphere in terms of uh, this differential equation. So uh, finding um, solutions to this equation, at least one alpha is, is non zero. Uh, it is it's not clear whether we can find solutions of that model, and even the existence of solution is, is not clear. However, um, there is a rigidity result that tells me that uh, solutions of this equation uh, uh, they, that they provide, a, they provide a necessary, a necessary condition for the existence of solutions of this, of of this uh, system of equations. And the rigidity result it's quite easy to see that uh, under, say, regular, uh, regular solution of solution, though, we, can, uh, we can remove the regularity and talk about solutions. <laughs> uh, any solution of, uh, of this equation satisfies that the gradient of the solution of the profile has this formula. 
is given by an exponential uh, increasing or decreasing, depending on whether we are uh, either with the swing test or with uh, the standards. Okay. So once we, uh, once we have this relation, uh, the question, natural question is, okay, but how do I call out and decide solutions of that? The question that has this kind of uh, property. Okay. So, and you know, yeah. So, so the, the string can have higher energy and uh, expand over Yeah, so I was going to say a little bit later that I think it probably this is the first of where no one is going to talk about energy. So I was going to uh, tell you this about it. When you consider the self uh, shrinkers, then they have uh, infinite energy at all times. Shrinkers. Shrinkers is a uh, plus. Ah. And the standards are is minus. And uh, for the standards, the, the energy is uh, finite for every posi uh, positive time, but it is is infinite at initial time. So that's sort of the <laughs> sort of a dissipation of energy in the presence of, of something. Yeah. Okay, so in order to find this type of solutions, we follow what the approach that uh, it was sort of is being well, that's in the setting of uh, of the uh, Schrodinger map or uh, in the setting of the Banoma plot. And for that, what we are going to do is to derive what we call, or I call, or we call, the ready representation of the energy equation. Okay. And uh, how, what this geometry representation is, uh, the, the this geometry representation consists in associate sort of the, the type of, sorry, the, the, no, yes, almost, right, here. Um, it's associating the, the non profile as, um, as, um, with the tangent vector of the curve in R3 that is parameterized with respect to the applet parameter and has associated a certain curvature and a certain torsion. So we know that there's a reference formula of the curve. The spatial, spatial resolution of the uh, tangent normal and normal associated to the curve in terms of the curvature and so using the serrational system of equation, we can compute what is the second derivative of the of the profile in terms of the infinite quantities, and uh, we can rewrite this LRT equation in terms of these intrinsic quantities in this in this one. Okay. So. Let's try to, there are, we are going to start with the cell expanders and then we are going to, to move into self shrinkers that we know a little bit more than the cell expanders. Okay, so for self expanders, as I said, we are interested in solutions that are cell similar of this type for some provide, imposing that a kind of answer on the profile implies that the normal by normal and the curvature and the torsion are also cell similar. And imposing that is a solution of the geometrical energy equation, and we are back to a system of, um, of equations involving the intrinsic quantities that just by taking the scalar product of this equation with the normal and the binomial vector and using the orthogonality properties, we arrive. <laughs> two equations involving the curvature and the torsion that in this particular case that is the magic and we can solve it explicitly and uh, arrive to this uh, uh, to these formulas for the curvature and the torsion and the torsion. <laughs> in the case when I think with zero we have the curvature is constant and that's the type of uh, uh, curvature that are associated to profiles of the of the corner circularity of the level okay. So once uh, we have the curvature and the torsion, we can integrate this reference system of equation. 
and uh, provide a, a, a good a existence of the profile that by construction, its evolution, so similar evolution of the standard type will give me um, a regular solution of the energy equation just by construction for every uh, positive time uh, t. Okay. Now, um, once we know the existence of this that <laughs> what we are interested is in understanding what our solutions behave in terms of the parameters. And in particular, we are interested in two type of questions. Uh, the question is, um, how does the, the solution constructed in this way behave for a uh, times uh, close to the initial time? So in other words, what kind is what kind of initial data are associated to this type of solutions? Yeah. And how does the presence of that thing affect the dynamical behavior of these solutions? For again, positive times close to C. Now, it also does make sense to study this behavior of these solutions for T on infinity, but we haven't, we haven't done that. No, I'm sorry, you, you said that in fact there are two solutions when it's T and minus T, but here you say it's unique. So, with finite energy, or you don't? Uh, so, what I'm saying, I'm just the first part is talking about the spanders. So, so it just says that this profile that could be S minus plus minus T. Yeah. So uh, plus this, is, this is so with plus here is the spanders, yeah. and with minus is going to be a spanders, and it's going to be later. Ah, okay, okay. So it's only that one that has a unique uh, profile. Uh, yes. So by solving uh, for the shrinkers, for the, for the spanders, the curvature and torsion of the profile is given by these two quantities. I solve this reference system of equation with some natural initial conditions. That gives me a solution, take the tangent, and evolve itself similar in this way. And that will give you a solution of the energy equation. For the span uh, swing test, so when we have a mass here, what happens is that the curvature will have the glass here, and the behavior is, is very different. So we want to understand uh, these solutions that are regular, and we want to understand what happens when it is close to zero. So, because of the cell similar nature of this uh, solution, understanding the behavior of the, of the solution at times close to zero implies the understanding of the profile at infinity. Um, there is an extra um, symmetry that allows you to just consider positive uh, values of the of the of S large. And if we want to study the profile at infinity, this is the same as integrating the reference system of equations with that curvature and that torsion. In general, it's uh, recovering the, the curve, the behavior of the curve from that of the curvature of the torsion is quite highly uh, non local and non, uh, and, uh, uh, non linear uh, thing. However, and mostly it uh, can be only done numerically, but in certain cases, we can. We can uh, do a little bit better. <laughs> so, uh, before doing that, we can always plot things to have an idea of what kind of uh, sort of profiles uh, we are obtaining here, just by putting in, in mathematical this reference system of equations with uh, this curvature and torsion and uh, different values of the of the alpha at C0. Okay. So these three pictures uh, depict um, in practice the parameter T0 uh, and constant. And we are moving the, the alpha for a smaller uh, division into the level And we observe in these uh, three pictures that um, in the three pictures, we see that the the profile converges seems to converge to two limiting vectors in all situations. That um, there is always this sort of a wave-like behavior uh, around the limiting uh, values, and obviously that the, the convergence to the to the limiting vectors is accelerated by 
the presence of uh, dumping. So the higher the land price, the dumping, the uh, faster is uh, faster the compliance. Okay, so how um, can, can we prove this analytically? Okay. Now, as I said, if we want to prove this analysis, we need to integrate this reference system of the questions with that core matter and option. And um, uh, what uh, the way sometimes it can be done. And um, there is a connection, so the reference system of the question can be integrated or can be reduced to the study of certain complex um, linear. The uh, equation uh, to a uh, change comparable that converts the set of system of equation into <laughs> something else using the set of protection that again can be reduced uh, further to the study of this of this equation. Okay. Now Studying the behavior of this, the solutions of this equation Monesco's to infinity will allow me to study the behavior of the, of the, of the solution when S is large because we can recover the component of the solution of the profile in terms of that of the solutions of this different um, differential equation. Remember that M lives in the sphere. We have three variables. For each of the variables, we have this equation. And the difference between F1, F2, and F3 are the initial conditions that we are imposing there. Okay. Um, okay, so we need to study that differential equation. Uh, when R0 is not here, uh, beta is uh, one, and there is an explicit solution of this equation in terms of parabolic cylindric um, And we did analysis when we studied the binomial flow frequency analysis. When alpha is equal one, so the level of harmonic mass again is an explicit solution. But when alpha is between zero and one, we don't, we don't have that solution, so we need to in that it is the equation. And the approach we follow is instead of uh, studying that equation, we introduce new uh, real value variables, set y and h, even in terms of the function f and the derivative in this way, which are the natural quantities that recover, on the other hand, the, the, the tangent normal and binomial vector. And study the system of equations that are satisfied by this new variable. Okay. I have to say that if we don't worry about the constants in the asymptotics not depending uh, on the parameter alpha between zero and one, then uh, the analysis of the asymptotics of this equation is quite straightforward. And okay. uh, this is due uh, to whether we have a strong, strong dumping in the in this. This past decade. Okay. Um, the technique we study the system of the volume satisfied by these quantities is using integral asymptotics. And um, we have an a priori conservation law that allows me to have bounds that allow me to start the bootstrapping. Using the oscillatory character of the solution, we are allowed to sort of obtain bounds that are independent of the parameter between zero and one. So, in all the synthetic, you can back to the limit when alpha is to zero. So, we can do that, and what we obtain is the following synthetics for the profile. May, may I ask? So, 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 so when you in the, so those quantities, uh, the real part. So, so when you integrate, you have um, the momentum, right? The yes. So, is it something fixed from the very beginning, or is it something that will vary, or because your solution is unique in some sense? So, do you it know right. how? Right, that should be one component. Mm -hmm. Right. When you integrate, so, so do you know uh, a priori what it is, or 
was the assumption is unique. Yeah, you said it should be unique. Uh, no, that's why I need to study the uh, well, I, I'm not sure whether I'm understanding, but I need to understand. It's not unique. It says it doesn't have no prime modulus. I thought the theorem was that there is a unique solution. It's unique curvature in that portion, not the curve. Okay. Okay. So this means that the you can have several values for your momentum. Uh. The momentum is given by f and f prime, yes? f and f prime uh, are solutions, or f is solution of this equation here. Now, depending on the component, we have different initial conditions. So these quantities are going to look different depending on the initial conditions imposed here. I don't know whether that Okay, no, I just wanted to get the um, yeah. interpretation of the, the quantities we need. Yes, I see what you mean. current in some sense, yes. So, so you can integrate. I thought there are some values of the momentum that uh, that you need to could uh, do the that they are a priori fixed or if they vary. I think when there is diffusion. I didn't have a look much into that. I think when we the diffusion, the, the, there is no conservation of momentum. So, but yeah. so analysis of, of this uh, of this solutions of this leads to the uh, the behavior of the profile at infinity, and the result is that if even any alpha between two and one is equal to the one uh, for this alpha, we will construct the profile within the Sarapana system of equation with that curvature and torsion. Then, for S sufficiently large that doesn't depend on alpha, we can see that there exist vectors in, in the unit sphere in which the asymptotics of the profile uh, is in this way. In particular, when S goes to infinity, we see that there the, is the, 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 the limiting vector of the of the device in this vector. The second term of the asymptotics, uh, the amplitude of the second term that contains the oscillation that we see in the pictures, um, is exponentially decaying. And the faster the, the higher the distribution will have faster convergence to these limiting values. And maybe more importantly, we have the characterization of the wave-like behavior of the that we have observed in the pictures, and given by this uh, phase function. Again, you need to understand this component by component. And the phase function is given by this quantity here and encodes the, the wave-like behavior independently of the of the of the alpha wave. The lower terms here, again, the contrast is that they are of lower order terms, but they don't depend on it. So we can pass, we recover the asymptotics that we have at the level of the shoulder mass, but that is the reason that I think it's that. Okay, so if we look a little bit more at the case, and in the case when alpha equals zero, it can be seen that. There is a logarithm correction to the standard dispersion relation, uh, but the minute we have diffusion, I suspect that the there, the phase of harmonic mass is sort of trivial at the level of, of the one in the question, and if the theta is zero in that case, and the phase is the is the Okay, so once we have the asymptotics uh, to the profile, um, we can sort of naturally that is the theorem for the for the solution of the energy equation. What? Okay. Something. Oh, where am I? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> there. And um, it says that uh, we have a regular solution of the energy equation. 
Detalhe que me sentei a cantar até a Rocha Cheia de Tudo aí. Sim, sim, sim. Ah, é. Jams. O imprensa por de Jams. E o imprensa por de Jams. E o imprensa de Arte e Prem por de Jams. There is a relation between the components of the A-minus and those of the components of the A-minus plus, even by this one, due to the identity of the of the question, and to have sort of a rate of convergence of the of the solution to the initial data when in L known when T are close to the initial time given by this one. And moreover, we have a precise asymptotic behavior for times that are close to zero, uh, given by the asymptotic behavior for self standard evolution. Okay. And obviously, understanding the type of initial data that we have here is understanding the behavior of the, of the vectors A plus and A minus with respect to the parameters uh, C0 and alpha. So if we want to understand the initial condition of the general standards, we need to understand A plus and A. Is it true that, as we've seen in the picture, that these two vectors are, these limiting vectors are different? Is it true that the initial conditions are always jumps? What can we say about the dependence of the this limiting vectors in kind of the initial conditions depending on the parameter? Okay, but the limiting vector are not antipodal. The limiting vector are not antipodal. Yes, so that is this. No, but okay. there, there is a sign missing there. Perhaps. They are, they are not. So there, there is this, uh, the first component is, is, is plus, and the other ones are minus. It's not antipodal. No, no. Okay. It's quickly, the, it's not sharp. P is not equal to one. Here, so that's in two. No, I think what well, this is this is just nothing. Uh, would, would, this is not sharp. We didn't study whether whether this this constant here, this constant is sharp. It's just a <coughs> it came the worst given the effect of this. Not okay. So what can we say about the the vectors B plus and A minus. And if we want to see whether these two vectors are different, given that there is a relation of the A minus with the A plus given by this, saying that the two vectors are the same implies it's the same as saying that the second and third component are, are zero, but it's the same. The third component needs to be that two minus one. E, the two vectors, limiting vectors, are the same. Okay. Now, in the case when alpha is equal to zero, there is magic relation that tells me actually there is a specific formula for the first component of the second vector, given by the density of the parameter, and it's given in this way. And from that formula, we can see that this is never equal to plus or minus one. And therefore, we always have a, a jump in that case in the formula at the level of the Okay, when alpha equals one, there is a specific formula, but again, it's not, not relevant. In that case, we have that if the two vectors are uh, different, if the parameter is zero, it's not a multiple, uh, entire multiple square root of one. When uh, we are in the general case, when alpha is between zero and one, uh, there are no explicit formulas, but uh, using the continuity of the finds each parameter C0 and alpha, the corresponding limit of alpha, and we are able to see or find uh, formulas for the component of the A plus in terms of the parameters of the, of the problem. Uh, so the second and the third component are different from zero, and that means that the two vectors are different. So the world will have a jump, at least when we have small values of C0. Okay. Now, um, and if we... C0 is freely prescribed. Sorry? Any C0 is allowed. 
Any CC readers allowed? Okay. There, there are problems depending on what C0 you are going to, what you are going to consider. So uh, again, if we want to understand the initial data, notice that the initial data is parameterized by the angle that is formed between A plus and A minus. So understanding the initial data is understanding the angle between these two vectors. For comparison purposes, and we, what we, we are uh, with, at the level of the Schrodinger map, what we, we were interested in is in considering the map for fix alpha between zero and one, the map that associates C0, the angle given by A plus and, sorry, minus A, A minus. So the angle between A plus and A minus is pi minus the angle. And we are trying to, we were interested in understanding the subjectivity and the activity properties of that. Subjectivity, uh, we are interested in, does this function pi attains any value between zero and pi by uh, moving the parameter C0 for fixed value of alpha? So that means, can I recover all the jumps by moving the parameter to zero. Can I gain all the jumps? And in the, in the activity uh, setting, we are interested in is can we generate the time angle using different values of C0? If the answer to this question is yes, we are in problem because we will generate the same jump using different values of C0. Okay. We cannot do much analytical in this setting. We could do these things when we are in the Schrodinger map case, but uh, we can do numerical analysis and see what is the picture that. So by using a numerical analysis, we observe the following. So we have here uh, the function of C0, and uh, we are including alpha equals zero, alpha equal one and the general situation of alpha between zero and one. Okay. And what you can see is that in any case, all the angles between zero and pi are, are attained by moving the parameter to zero. Um, we can see that when alpha is between zero and one, excluding the Schrodinger map case, and there is a non-uniqueness phenomena in the sense that if the angle between A plus and minus A minus is a small, alpha, it seems like a, it would be generate the same jump by moving the parameter C0. Yeah? And we don't like that because that implies that there is, well, there is no uniqueness phenomena. But if we restrict ourselves to the angle being uh, close to pi. So in other words, when the angle between A plus and A minus is a small, the figures so that maybe you are able to uh, obtain uniqueness in that setting. And this is something that uh, it was proved. So it, it is true that it can be proven that if the angle between A plus and A minus is small, then uh, there exists the solution. Uh, and it's numerical, numerical is we see that the two vectors uh, are the same, it's the same as to say that the angle is pi, and you can see that at least for alpha between zero and one, the two vectors are different for any C zero. Analytically, we can only for C0. What is the change in angle, the, the curvature between these zeros? Between yeah. consecutive zeros, what's the change in C0? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know much about the structure of the zero, zeros of this function. Oh. But it is proven analytically that any angle is a time. Uh, any uh, um, analytically, you can prove 
if the angle is small between a plus and a minus, so uh, sorry, I'm, again, this figure is relates to a plus and minus. So, so when the angle is small between a and a minus, it can be proved that there is a unique solution. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we do. When the angle is is uh, is a big, so when we are this level, that you know that you need to restrict somehow the world of necessarily to avoid coming to the field of solutions you can uh, you can do that. Um, <laughs> I would say that this non-uniqueness phenomenon has been previously observed for uh, at the level of harmonic mass in higher than of course. Um, uh, well, part of uh, Germain and some other authors saw that when we look at data has energy that is not finite, we can construct uh, um, solutions of the harmonic mass for the fit flow into the sphere that are different. And this is what we are looking at at this small level. And uh, we could do Analytically, when alpha is close to, to one, that there is that. Mm -hmm. I don't know when do I have to finish. One to two. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So surface rings, we can do the same. So we have uh, the surface rings are given by profiles evaluated from this book. You can see that the carbon and torsion is a torsion. There is a chain cosine between the curvature and torsion to that of the case we have to study for the standard. And uh, we can uh, solve the Sarafina system with this curvature and torsion that is near profile, that is regular. And again, what we want to understand is what happens uh, with the solution when T with the singularity time to be zero. Okay. And then what happens is that if you want to study the uh, linear zero, you need to study the profile at infinity. And uh, you can study the profile and I'm going to give you the what happens. For the profile, the behavior of the, of the profile is very different in the case of the expanded I mean a really And uh, the profile, uh, as you said, that this Everything for a shrink relates to alpha between strictly bigger than zero. The profile is given in terms of a highly oscillatory uh, first term, so there is no limiting vector of the profile when uh, S to infinity. Uh, the oscillation of the profile is given in terms of this uh, energy, uh, the energy of the of the profile. Remember that remember that the, the energy is given by the derivative of the M, and in that case, it's sort of the curvature, which is precisely this kind of quantity. So there's highly oscillatory term encodes that is the energy of the of the of the profile. Followed by uh, some uh, exponential decay in terms. Now, uh, this term is that the process of the same order of magnitude. This one, the important thing is that uh, there is a vector B here, that is the unit vector, and the vector B plus is given by the limiting vector of the normal at infinity. There are certain uh, uh, constants here, um, but this again is fast oscillating time, plus some exponential decay, one of them carrying the limiting vector of the binary And at the point of the line, what we can see is that uh, when the time goes to the time of singularity, the solution approaches um, the semi-singular evolution in the hinder form of the first term of this asymptote. Now, the idea of the proof, uh, we are going to do the analysis is different, and we need to do the analysis at the level of the equations. And the reason for that 
is that in the case of the straight curves, we have a highly exponentially, you know, this is a non non bounded, and this guy also gives me problems. So I, I can't do integration by part that allows me to do the analysis, but we can do it in the same system that we um, want to do. Two temperatures. This is the profile for self test for a particular value of C, C0 in one, 0 0.5, and alpha, a typical value between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. The first graph is the, contains the values of the profile when S is positive, and the second graph contains values of the profile for S positive and negative. And what we observe is that the figure suggests that the unit sets of the trajectories of the profiles are red circles, meaning circles that lie on the plane passing through the origin here as f goes to infinity. Okay. Um, and the question is, is it true? What can we say about these two circles? And what can we say about uh, the behavior of these uh, two circles in terms of the parameters of the of the equation. Okay. And uh, we can do something, but not much. We can see, uh, we can, more importantly, we can, uh, we can prove analytically that what we observe is true, and in the sense that the behavior of the lies on a gray circle when it's goes to infinity. And uh, these two circles that you see that are different, you can say that they are different in the certain range of the parameter C. Now, um, proving that the, the limit sets of the trajectories of the profile are gray circles implies uh, identifying the gray circle. Once we identify the first circle, which means identifying the local vector to the to the thing, is a, a you need to prove it. Okay, and we can do that. So the characterization of the first circle is given by the minimum vector on the binomial vector. Once you have identified that, there is a, is an exponential bound that tells me that the profile converges to that first circle. And this is not trivial because if you want to study the distance between the profile and this red circle, this implies finding a precise uh, relationship between the, the binom the vector B defining the red circle with that of the constants of the profile. And this uh, can be done. And uh, just one more, Valeria, I'll tell you the whole story. Um, and in terms of the of the behavior of the circles, we study the angle between the <laughs> and we can see that uh, when C is big, this quantity is the uh, more than one. So the angle between the two circles is strictly positive. So in fact, we have uh, two different circles. Thank you for joining.